Hey everybody, it's Annie. I am so excited that I finally feel set up and well planned enough to share with you today how I plan for our homeschool year. Now, this gorgeous planner is from Anna Vance Paper Co. And if you want to see a detailed flip when I first got it in an unboxing, please check out my video from a couple months ago. I'll try to remember to put it in a card above to help you find it. Otherwise you can just, you know, go back, um, not that many videos actually, and see a detailed flip of this planner. But now I'm getting really close to the beginning of our school year and I've picked out our curriculum. I've kind of mapped out um, the big picture, where we wanna start, where we wanna stop our approximate breaks and all those kinds of things. And I wanna kind of use the planner to walk you through how I plan and how I process. So it is gonna be a little bit chatty, but I really find these videos helpful um, when I watch other videos like this. So I'm really hoping you'll just wash some dishes or relax with some coffee or fold some laundry while you watch and maybe take some notes if you find anything inspiring. Also, I never do this, but I wanna apologize for the lighting. Um, usually I don't draw any attention to that, but I just, I, I'm filming at a weird time of day. I use natural lighting and this is the best I can do, but I kind of checked it out. I think um, you guys are going to be able to read everything. And yeah, I think, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, so this planner has so many features that um, I want to share with you, but it really helps me kind of break up my planning and not be overwhelmed and to really kind of get a feel for the upcoming school year. So one of my favorite spreads is actually towards the back and it's way back here in the record section. Whoops. Okay, so this is called the lessons at a glance. Actually, wait, no. Um, I should first start with the map your year at the beginning. Sorry, I changed my mind. I'm trying to start um, like I plan, which is the big overarching kind of yearly intention, um, kind of zeroed into my daily lesson planning, okay? All right, so this section is gold. I love how you could use this any way you wanted, as an attendance tracker, as whatever. I think I talk about some of those ideas in my flip through. How I'm using it is kind of how it's intended, and that is to be able to pick our weeks of school. So there's kind of a blank column over here next to the dates. So what we've got here is this is September 1st, and then here's October 1st. So the months are alternating colors. I'm just gonna make sure I'm in frame that you can see pretty well, yes. So we are gonna start school the last week of August, and this is totally gonna be the almost like get ready to go back to school week. We're gonna have a ton of fun and look through our new books and things like that on the first day. We're not going to officially be doing a whole lot of schoolwork. Um, and the same thing throughout the week, unless we feel like we're kind of getting our rhythm by Thursday, um, this is gonna, I'm trying to make it lighthearted and fun. We have been having a crazy summer. This is like our get our lives, get our schedule, get our routine back together, bedtimes, meal times, school mode. So I'm excited about that, which would put our first like official week of school that first week of September. So over here on the side, it's slightly covered up. I can't put it at the top because the tab is in the way. It says map your year, but I love that you can rate the week numbers. So I have gone ahead and I have mapped out the week numbers for the entire school year. Now we shoot for 180 days of school with 36 weeks of school. And no, not every single one of those 180 days is officially book work at home. I include our homeschool co-op, that is um, 10 in the fall, and then 10 in the winter after we get back from Christmas holidays. We'll have 10 more classes, so 20 of those are outside the home with our friends and different classes and things like that, plus field trips. Um, but this is how I make sure we're planning enough time to get our book work done and also fitting in all of our fun stuff. Now this little book dart um, is from, well, I got mine from jetpens.com. Um, you can get them from Amazon, I think. 
I'll try to remember to put it in my Amazon link down below. That's just a way for me to link miscellaneous items like this. And yes, um, I, a small amount of your purchase um, benefits me at no additional cost to you. So if you do choose to use my link and shop through Amazon, I do really appreciate it. Uh, but this is just what I'm going to use and you can just slide it along and I'm going to keep it pointed to which week we're on. So I think this is going to be fun and pretty and functional. Oops, I'm trying to get it under that page too. So that way I can see the progress and see the motivation. Now this year, um, I really thought about my eight years. I think I've done seven years of school. This is the beginning of my eighth um, the experiences of the last years where the first, basically leading up to the holidays and the new year, I am usually still excited about school, still motivated, routines are good, and I don't need a whole lot of breaks. And then come <laughs> January, February, March, and April, I am like dying. So what I decided to do is have 13 weeks, which brings us up to the week of Thanksgiving as official school weeks. Now, am I gonna need a sick day? Am I gonna need maybe an administrative day where I just take one day off um, or two days off within this time? Probably, but I'm not gonna take an official break, definitely not a whole week, unless something comes up that I cannot predict. I wanna take all of the momentum and all of the energy and all of that that I have and get a good solid 13 weeks in. Then we have one week off for Thanksgiving, and then we have just like three weeks, and we're gonna take two weeks off around Christmas and New Year's. I sometimes do some school in here, but I decided to officially make it a break, and we can do fun stuff. Um, I can do like a, a Christmas unit if I want, and I will then take off some days at the end. We could finish early if we wanted or something like that. But I would rather plan the break and then maybe do some extra rather than think, oh, I, sh you know, we can do a few things. You know what I mean? Um, and then I'm going with a five weeks on, one week off. Five weeks on, one week off. And I'm doing that for the rest of the year where I can take a full week off to recharge, to do fun school, Maybe we'll just do math that week, or maybe we'll actually take the whole week as a break. Again, if I'm feeling good and I wanna do just the teeniest little bit or and, and count it as school so then we can finish early or something like that, I am not going to worry about it. But I have given myself permission to take all of those weeks off and still get everything in. So I think that's really important. Um, a lot of homeschool moms in that last half, that last stretch, the third or the third and fourth quarter, that's a really hard time of year. So if you're new to homeschooling um, or you haven't thought about it before, think back and that's probably when you would want the most breaks and maybe you could kind of map out your year in that same way. So I have officially declared a last day. I have never done that before. One thing that I'm trying to do this year as well is obviously with homeschool planning or teacher planning and even life planning in general, you have to be flexible. Things are going to change. If, <laughs> if we never believed that before here in 2020, we know that we cannot predict anything. But if I have, if I have ever erred in my homeschool, it's been almost being too relaxed where it's suddenly the middle of February and I really just have not accomplished what I need to with my kids. So this year, I am going to be a little bit more strict with myself with when we're going to do school, when we're gonna start, when we're gonna have breaks. Again, obviously flexibility, things can change, but I have mapped it out with plenty of breaks, but also getting our work done. So I have never officially declared a last day of school that before the school year has begun because I have always been like, well, we might need to take breaks and we'll just finish up when we need to. It's going to be mid-July. You know, I've always had this tentative date, but I'm really going to try to hold myself to a start and a stop time with a little flexibility 
inside. I think that's going to be good for me. That's going to um, allow me to still be flexible, but work on my weakness, which is being way too flexible, in which case I can get in trouble sometimes. So map your year. I figured out all of our breaks, when we're going to start, when we're going to stop. Um, I do not use the monthly spread for very much. I have some ideas. I might need to use it, but as of right now, it's kind of blank. I will write things in here like maybe a dentist appointment or piano lessons, things that affect school, but I have a personal planner. Um, and so I'm really kind of always aware and I don't really need it in here. If I write it in here, it's more often for record keeping. So that way I can look back at this at some day, or if I ever needed to prove my education to somebody, I could be like, well, the reason we didn't do very much school on this day is because we were at the dentist, you know? And so those kinds of things, um, I like to have in my record keeping or like we're taking piano off this month. Oh, I didn't write it down. And we're also taking it off next month. Okay, like I said, our first week of school is going to be the 24th through the 27th. We officially only do book work, you know, like at home, at our home textbooks, Monday through Thursday, because we have so many classes on Friday um, throughout the year. And it's our kind of bonus day uh, when we don't have classes. And so I have mapped out the first half of the year with these little date dots. They're just stickers I got from like the Happy a Happy Planner book or something like that. Um, I think this apple is from one of the Erin Condren. Do I have it in here? Yep, it's this one. How long is this already? Super long. Awesome. <laughs> Um, the apple came from Cool for School, which is a little sticker book. So it had like a first day, a 50th day, a 100th day, and a last day, I think. So I marked all of those in here. And again, I never would have marked a 50th day or a 100th day any other year apart from this year because I have been so relaxed. But like I said, I think it's going to be a good goal for me not to be like super strict, but to just hold myself to an intelligent, well thought out schedule, knowing that there's probably going to be adjustments, but let's just deal with what we've got and try to keep on track. That is my like personal goal for this year. So this might be from an Erin Condren book. I'm not really sure to be honest. Somebody gave this to me and these are all happy planner stickers that somebody gave to me. So just random school ones in case I need them, I put them in there. But I've done, what I've done is in the Sunday column, I've marked the week number, the first week of school, the second week of school, and then third, fourth, fifth, and all that. Um, I have some notes with sticky notes. I have these, oh, maybe I didn't remember to put them in here. These um, holidays were a sticker sheet like this. And I went through, and even though it's printed right there, again, I don't need to write much information in here, so that's hard to see. So I put the stickers in here to make it pop out because this is either going to affect my school or might be something where I wanna focus, like what is Labor Day, and talk about it. Um, marking piano lessons, marking our homeschool. Now we have 10 weeks of homeschool and it's important for me to know which week we're on. So week one of homeschool is obviously not week one of school for us. So I do have to have these marked. Um, I just put a quote there. So I've gone through a little bit here and mapped some things out. So there you go, there's the 50th day, things like this. And I think I've gone through Christmas. I don't think I did anything in January. Oh, I did. Okay, so I put all of, oh, I remember doing this. I put all of the weeks in here because again, even though it might get slightly off by like one week, it's gonna catch back up. So for instance, if by the 26th week of school, we are actually a week behind and this is our 25th week, the next week is a break. And that's a time where I would maybe be like, okay, we need to catch up. So we would do some extra work here to catch up to effectively make us, by the time we start the 27th week, on time. So it's, I think the way I've done the breaks, even though we might have to tweak it here or there, we're really going to be within a week or two of the projection going on. 
So Easter, April Fools. And then here we come to the countdown. Now I had a lot of fun with this. This is a break week. I had a lot of fun with this. One, I ran out of stickers because they're meant to be date stickers for like a month. And the highest a month will go to is 31. So over here is the 31st week of school. And then I did a countdown. So we have five more weeks, four more weeks, three more weeks, and then our official last week of school will be here. And I also wrote a note. I have this idea at the end of school next year where I wanna do an achievement day. So we'll have our last book work day and then to kind of celebrate with my kids, celebrate with my husband, I'm actually gonna make it the next day. And um, we're gonna be working on some projects and some notebooking and different things like that this year that we've never really done in the past. And I think that would be a really fun day to flip through our books, look through our activities, um, enjoy some of the projects we did, show them to my husband, show them to their dad, so that way you know he can really be a part of it. Um, I typically will print off a certificate of some kind to say congratulations, you worked hard and completed another year of school. Um, maybe we'll have a special dinner. It's just a really fun time. So I wrote that in to remind myself and I'll see it coming up and plan some stuff. So that is what I use this for. Um, like I said, I possibly will write some other things in here. Like maybe uh, if we're doing a hymn of the week, I might write that in here maybe on a Monday. Um, some miscellaneous things like that. Maybe if we're studying a, a, an artist. Well, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. So, so far that's our full year our month by month, trying to get breaks and things like that. And then before I do the weekly plans, I wanna show you this in the back. So this is a, f a favorite section of mine. I'm still in frame, right? Okay, good. This is called Lessons at a Glance. You know what, I don't need this here if I've got that bookmark. Let me move this. Okay, now new to me this year is Story of the World History. I did dabble in it for a couple of weeks at the end of the last school year, but nothing nothing really like fully or intensely. And we're doing five in a row with my three youngest. And I'm doing beyond five in a row um, just for the literature portion, really discussion and literature for my two oldest. We're also doing another subject that's new to us and I'll show you that in my weekly section. But part of Story of the World is you have a textbook which kind of reads like a novel, actually. It's a living book, it's, it's not a textbook. Um, but think of it like the text. And there's different chapters. The chapters are not usually very long and sometimes they have a sub section. But essentially, it will be a breeze to do one chapter a week. And I think that's actually how the curriculum's designed or one of the ways it could be used. So I mapped out and wrote in here, let me try to zoom you in. Let's see here. Okay. I wrote, we're gonna do the intro chapter, chapter one, chapter two, three. I've mapped us out until chapter 13 because I have so many new curriculums this year. I have four students instead of three and I'm almost including my youngest because she's gonna be a huge distraction where I'm gonna to have to spend a lot of time either keeping her occupied or a lot of time trying to include her in without interruption. So I really kind of feel like I'm doing five kids this year, but I have four students and I'm doing some new to me curriculum. So I'm not sure until we actually get into our school year, how long things are gonna take. I can guesstimate based on descriptions in the book and how much time I wanna to devote to it, but I really need to use the materials and get partway through the year so I can figure out if we do 10 minutes a day, is that gonna be enough? If we do one lesson a day, how long is that gonna take? Because I really need to do a lesson a day to, to make progress through the book for the year, that kind of stuff. So I've, I've left myself the ability to adjust by only going the first 13 weeks, which gets me up to Thanksgiving break. So that is awesome. The other thing is we're doing a ton of the suggested read alouds that go along with Story of the World, and some of them are chapter books. So the first one is actually a chapter book, and I wanna time it, obviously, so that way when I'm reading the read aloud, we're studying that still, 
in our history lessons when we're doing our mapping, our activities, our narration, and our review, which works out fine because they've kind of prepared the curriculum to do that. So our first one is a chapter book. If I start reading it the first week, I read it through the first week, through the first chapter, and finish it midweek through that third week or the second chapter, then one, I'm finishing it in a timely manner. I've looked how many chapters there are. It's not going to be a big deal. It's not that thick of a novel. So it's doable to do it in that time span. And also, that's about the time when we finish talking about the time period that novel is talking about. And then I have some shorter chapter books like a Magic Treehouse book. And I actually have three weeks where I can finish that, although I probably won't need that much time. But that's how far into the chapters, I guess, that time period fits. But then I also have another chapter book which is much longer. And I actually have one, two, three, four, five weeks where it fits that time period. And I have five weeks of reading this aloud to my kids to fit it in and still get into some of the next books. Now, a lot more of the books after that are actually picture books. So I have some heavy, some heavier chapter books at the, the first few weeks. It was sort of a coincidence. But then I have books like The Golden Sandal, which is actually like a picture book. So we'll read it that day. And I'll probably read a chapter of the chapter book if we haven't finished it yet. So by doing this, I'm able to make sure I'm reading things that correspond with what we're studying and give me plenty of time to finish longer books and fit them in and things like that. So I have this mapped out like that. And I will do that for the next, for the last um, chapters once I get here and I've got a really good feel for, is this trying to do too much or do we actually, this is very comfortable so I can plan it like this for the next set of weeks. I have done the same thing with our five in a row. Five in a row is a picture book study where you could do five in a row with your younger kids. I think it's designed for like ages four to eight or something, something like that. And apart from a math course and a phonics course, it includes every single subject, science, art, history. Um, what else, what else is in there? Uh, science, art, history, geography, poetry. I mean like all the stuff, it's all in there. I am using this as I am not planning on doing that much from each of the chapters or each of the books and diving into all the subjects. This is more like a literature, a way to bring in books and conversation and literature and good, good reading with my kids. So we're going to be doing a lot of coloring pages, a little bit of lap booking. We are going to do some of the science experiments. So like the first one is the story of Peng. And there's this really fun activity because it's about this duck on, um, what's that famous river in China? I can't remember now without the book in front of me. And there's an experiment where you take a tub of water or your sink filled with water and you get a bunch of objects from around the house and you say to your kids, do you think this is going to sink or float? And you put all the objects in water. Like it's so basic and so simple. It's not this like crazy thing. So we'll do little activities like that. Um, we'll do some of the art. They have notebooks and I'll have them draw in there. And because of the way that we are doing five in a row, we're gonna spread out each book over two weeks so we can just spend a few minutes a day. Like my goal is like 10 minutes a day uh, or 15 minutes a day. And we'll do every few days, we'll read the book again. Um, so we're not gonna read it every day for two weeks. That would be reading it like eight times. Um, but we are going to read it as much as my kids want and every few days or every few days. And then we'll discuss things and we'll have fun. And I think it'll be a good time because all three of my little ones can be together. And so that's, I'm excited. So I needed to plot out if I did every book for two weeks, which books should I do? Because there are some like one is called Cranberry Thanksgiving. And I actually have that near Thanksgiving. Um, there's a few that are winter themed, Katie and the Big Snow. I don't wanna do that in 
August slash September, I want to do that when we have snow. So I made sure to kind of put certain books with certain seasons and plot them out and make sure I had enough. And again, I only got myself through the first 13 weeks, in which case I will have done most of the books in five in a row. And I will either have to find some of the harder to find books um, that I wasn't able to get yet and I can finish out the year with those or I'm gonna have to get another volume. And so this was volume one and I can get volume two. So there you go. And then lastly, um, also with, hang on, I'm making sure I'm in frame, here we go. Also with my older kids beyond five in a row, my intention with this is not for it to be the all-inclusive spine curriculum um, because you could use this for your history, your science, your literature, your spelling, your vocabulary, all of it, your art, and um, anything else. Basically anything except for math and some sort of grammar program. Although you fit a lot of grammar and language arts in here, but usually you still pull in a, an official grammar program. I'm using this as literature. So my goals, some of my goals this year, especially using this curriculum, I want my two older kids to practice reading aloud to me. Um, for the past like two years, I have not had them read aloud to me much at all. They just, you know, once you get past the beginning reading stages and you kind of become fluent, um, you let your kids go. But reading aloud is a great skill. And I want my kids to not only be able to do it well, but to sound interesting and have inflection and make it delightful to hear. So I want my kids to practice reading aloud. Um, I want it to be an opportunity for discussion. So there's discussion questions and there's things that we're gonna talk about. Um, so we might talk about scientific things or historical things or even art or whatever things, but I'm not necessarily gonna have my kids do the activities in the book. So I'm gonna use it to guide our discussion, but I'm not necessarily gonna have them like making things or researching things. If they're interested in something, I'll try to help them so they can go and be interest led, but I wanna use it as an opportunity to just teach my kids that reading is not just fun and interesting, but you can learn a lot. So I want them to be discerning and increase their vocabulary, increase their reading skills quietly and aloud, and use it as a huge boost for literature and comprehension. So I have mapped out the books that we're going to do. We're for sure gonna do three of them, maybe four, because I have spread them out where we're only doing a chapter a week. Again, this is not the spine of my curriculum, so we are not doing multiple chapters a week which is kind of how the curriculum is designed. It is designed uh, to move through a little quicker, especially with some chapters and some books. We're limiting it to one chapter a week and I'll show you how I'm dividing that up in my weekly planner. Okay, so we have a weekly planner section. I'm gonna need to zoom back out and then I'll zoom back in, hang on. Okay, well, the sun is being weird. This is a very typical teacher planner spread. Um, sometimes they're pre-labeled with blank subjects or times, you know, if you have a more like a high school class, you could have your periods up here. Usually it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the whole row is available to you for that day for your subjects, to do's, or whatever. Now, one of the things I did, uh, if you order an Anavance planner, there are so many customizable options and they are so good at what they do, their quality control, and it's just a husband and a wife, a little family in their home making these, that the turnaround time, especially because of the customization, is several weeks. So I knew to order this way ahead of time, and I also ordered a bunch of extra, I think I picked the largest amount of weekly planning pages that you could select in the options, because I didn't know when it would come. And I also have not used this planner before or used a teacher planner in a long time because I'm usually record keeping as opposed to planning. And I knew that I wanted to be able to actually write in it and kind of like a rough draft and figure out what I need. So <laughs> like I said, this is gonna be a little bit of a long video, but I tried different things where um, I prefer 
the days of the week to be at the top. So that way, um, like if it's school and it's Monday, I can have this flipped over like this and Monday is all here. If your Monday is here and your weeks go this way, that means that for half of the day or part of the day, you can only see part of your school and then you would have to flip it over to see the rest. And that to me is just a little bit confusing and slightly annoying. So I would either have to leave it out, which this is a huge planner, or um, what I love is if I can kind of go down this way. So I tried all sorts of spreads, like how would I label the sides? Um, what subjects do I need to actually plan? Things like our math, for instance. Our math is open and go. It's teaching textbooks, it's online. Um, my younger kids who are not old enough for teaching textbooks yet have a math curriculum where you literally open the book and you just pick up where you left off. We don't even go by the lesson numbers because my daughter right now is going so quickly through the pages. I kind of set a timer for like 15 to 20 minutes and we go as far as she can go. It could be a couple of pages or a couple of lessons. So I don't need to write that down anywhere. I don't need anything relating to that. So I have some subjects like that. So which subjects do I need to actually write down some information for? Do I have enough room? Blah, blah, blah. Here's another one where I did it the right the right way where I did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then what subjects would I fill in? And I was constantly having the struggle that there's way too much space for me. And I was like, I don't want, I don't like the look of a ton of empty spaces. So what am I gonna do? And then I had this amazing idea. Instead of using both sides of this for one week, I am using this for one week. And this is actually the next week. So you can kind of see it up here, I think, week one and week two. This is two full weeks for me and I'll show you how I'm making it work, okay? So let me zoom in so you can see the sections. All right, I totally understand if you could not plan this way. I am like being uber specific to my brain. Like I just really am. So I have four children who are school age. So this, um, so Evan is 10. He's in like fifth and sixth grade work. Reese is eight. She's in like fourth and fifth grade work. Cecilia is kindergarten, first grade work. And Levi is starting his preschool journey. So these are my kids and the first four, no, the first three boxes are designated for the whole week. So what I mean by that is this. Let's see if I can explain this. Okay, so let's start with my two oldest. I have labeled the first box miscellaneous because, um, but it's, it, it, maybe I'll start labeling it independent work because for them it's independent, but for these guys it's not. Um, I am going to just try to keep a record of what math lessons they're on and they've completed only to help us keep pace because uh, although I don't need to plan what we're doing, I do wanna make sure we're doing enough. So for the first week, they should be doing lessons one through four. So this is not a day by day planning thing. This is throughout the week, the four days that we do school, it's built into their routine and I'll do a whole separate video of our upcoming school routine. It's built into their schedule routine that they do a math lesson. So they just know that these are the ones that they need to do. I am going to have them do typing probably twice a week and they have a science curriculum online that they're also going to do probably twice a week. I think because the lessons are shorter that they can actually do two lessons. Well, they can do four lessons a week on two days. So on Monday, they could do lessons one and two, and it would probably take them 20 minutes. So that's one of those things that I have to actually get into the school year and get a feel for, and I might have to tweak how many days they do it or how many lessons they do, but that's what I'm predicting based on everything I know. So this is like a little record keeping box for me. This is not really like, I need to plan ahead what they're doing. This is me remembering what they are supposed to do every day so I can be like, hey, did you do your math? Did you do your typing? Did you do your science? That kind of thing. But it doesn't really matter that I know what they're on. Does that make sense at all? I hope so. Um, 
By the way, I love sticky notes. I love how they look in my planner. I love having them everywhere. And this one is, I have two scheduling ideas. And so I have one scheduling idea written here and I have an alternate scheduling idea written here. And we'll see um, which one I decide on. Or maybe we'll try one and if it doesn't work as well, I'll try the other. But when I do my scheduling video, I'll talk about it. So over here, I am going to use these boxes to record uh, my youngest to how much math they're doing. Again, this is gonna be a record keeping type thing to help me keep pace. I might plan out my little preschoolers math ahead of time once I get a feel again for how interested he is, how long it takes us. I might plan it out because we may not do it every day. We might do math twice a week and do language arts the other two days. So for him, I might plan ahead to just kind of help keep me on track because he's doing so much less because he's a preschooler. Okay, so this is another little note for language arts that I just have there. Okay, the next box is language arts. Now my older two kids are trying a new to them, new to us, language arts curriculum. And again, I really, this is for the week. So I don't plan it by the day, but this is a good, um, oops, are we in frame? This is a realistic amount of stuff to get done for the week and I've sort of divided it out so you're not feeling like there's too much on a particular day. Okay, that did not make sense. So like I know that we have 20 spelling words for the week. They have four days of work. 20 divided by four is five. They have five spelling words per day. They're going to copy, cover, and write and they're also going to make a picture definition. So I want them to know how to spell it and I want them to know what the definition is and they can draw a picture to define it. Um, one lesson per day and I have some notes about it. I'm not sure once we get familiar with this curriculum what I'm going to put here. It might be this just reminding me the procedure for language arts and also uh, record keeping which lessons we get through. So these kind of are record keeping boxes and not planning boxes so much. To get to the boxes that are more like planning, so I have, um, I have it labeled five in a row, but for these two kids, it's actually before five in a row, and for these guys, it's just five in a row. Now at the top, I wrote down which book we're on because I feel like that might be important. Um, because this is the first week of school, we're not actually going to be doing this with my older two kids, but I do wanna try it with my younger kids. So that's why there's nothing written here. I have, um, oh, I thought I had a note written. I think maybe I wrote some of it on the back. No, I didn't. All right, well, I'll talk you through it. Once again, this represents a week, not like on Monday we're doing this, on Tuesday we're doing this because I might be able to get all of this done on Monday and then I'm kind of done for the week or I may not get all of these things done. So part of it is just knowing what's coming up um, and getting a feel for the flow so I don't schedule too much or too little. But I also wanna leave the flexibility that, you know, Monday's not going well. So on Tuesday when it's going well and I have my kids' attention, I can kind of do two activities instead of just one. So there's the, I feel like there's a lot of freedom for me but again, like I said in the beginning, my goal for myself is to really hold myself a little bit more accountable and to a little bit more of like a schedule while allowing for flexibility in life and enjoyment. I hope this is like the best of both worlds for me. So I have written down the activities because there's so many activities available to you in the teacher's manual. I picked out the ones that I knew that we would do and skipped the ones that were too involved or my kids wouldn't like or I wouldn't like. And so I wrote down which ones. So as the day comes, I'm not opening my teacher's manual and I have decision fatigue and I have to pick which activities we're gonna do. Also, some of them include um, like the buoyancy experiment that I mentioned. Some of them include supplies and I wanna know ahead of time, okay, that's gonna be a water day. In fact, because we're gonna be doing this in August, it's very possible we can just do this outside. So little things like that to help me 
plan ahead, have the supplies we need, not be overwhelmed, not try to do too much, but also try to hold myself to a standard. So I've written those down. I'll probably just cross them off or do a little check when we do them. Now, <laughs> these last two boxes do not follow the columns, Evan, Reese, Cece, Levi. Now, this is just how my brain works. My brain, without me needing to like draw a line or put some tape right here, automatically goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Those are the four days we do book work. And so those are the four most scheduled, most routine oriented days in our week. Friday is our routine is different. Saturday is our free day. Sunday we have church and things like that. So those days have like their own, their own thing. But on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have regular chores, wake up times, meals, school schedules, etc. So this is my history row and I use it to help me divide the chapter, remember I'm doing one chapter a week, into four days. So this is the one spot where I am slightly dividing things up by day. Now I did go ahead so that way I would know how to get going. Even though we're not really gonna do this the first week of school, I wanted to know how it was gonna look and what we're gonna do is read the chapter and do the narration. So I'll have my older two give me a narration. Um, I'll have my kindergartner do it if she's still listening. I'm not gonna require her to. And I will also um, try to help my preschooler give me a narration if he's still there. So at, by the time we get to history in our schedule, um, my three little ones have kind of done all of their school and are probably off playing. Again, I will have an upcoming video where I share my routine schedule for the upcoming year that I'm going to start with. So uh, we're going to read and do a narration. I figure that's going to take us 10 or 15 minutes. That's it. But then I also have a loop of art and music and geography. So we're going to try to do those each once a week. Now I talked about this, I think in my curriculum halls for each of my individual kids, but easy peasy all in one homeschool online is a free K through 12 full every subject, um, full year's worth of school for your kids all online. Well, they have an art course you can do where you follow art through ancient times, which is what we're studying in history. And the art lessons are designed to be once a week. So on Monday, we're going to go through and you can click on different links and it'll either take you to, so like, you know, some of the first art was actually cave paintings, right? So it'll take you to photographs that archeologists have found of cave paintings. It'll have um, depictions of it. It'll have maybe a YouTube video where it will already be linked and it'll take you to a five minute video showing you some cave paintings. Maybe you can even try your hand at a cave painting. Super simple, probably takes 15 minutes. So we'll do that on Mondays. On Tuesdays, I think is when our piano lessons are gonna be. So we're gonna have a little bit lighter day, but we are going to review the previous chapter. I'm not gonna read it again, we're gonna review it. This is also gonna be my time to add in some extra read aloud if we need it, but I actually do read aloud at bedtime for my kids. It's not technically in our school day. So that's when I'm really gonna be reading the bulk of our read aloud books. And then in my history curriculum, there's almost always a map uh, for each chapter and oftentimes also a coloring page or sometimes it's an activity page like write your name in hieroglyphics or do this word search. So we're gonna do one or even both on that day and that's it. We're gonna review and color. So that's gonna take what, 15 minutes? And then on Wednesday, we're gonna read the second part because sometimes the chapters have subsections, two subsections. So um, this week, it does, and we're gonna read the second part, and I'm gonna have my kids narrate that part. And then we're gonna do our music loop. And just almost identical to the art is easy peasy, all in one homeschooling. They have music, and you can do ancient music. It actually starts and it talks about, I think the first instruments recorded and, and known about were the whistle. 
So we're gonna listen to it. We're gonna look at it. We're gonna hear it. There's YouTube and, and pictures and all this kind of stuff. So we're gonna spend 10 to 15 minutes on that. And then the last day of the week where we do book work, we have a gorgeous book of centuries, also from Anna Vance. I share it in my Anna Vance haul so you can see that. We are going to add the relevant information that we read about this week to our book of century. So the first week, it actually talks about what is archeology, span what is history, and it talks about um, when you were born, when your parents were born, when your grandparents were born. So specifically this week, we're gonna add our family to the book of centuries. And then we're gonna review geography. So any geography we settled on, so if we're doing ancient China, then we're going to review the map we're going to look at the globe again, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to review geography and I'm going to spend um, as much as 10 to 15 minutes, almost like drilling it, maybe having some games, close your eyes and point, who can find it the fastest to really take it from just something we're reading about to a little bit of memorization. And then I have down here that we're reading a chapter book and I need to be reading chapters six through 10 to stay on schedule for fitting it into the timeline. So if we have a picture book on different days, some of the days, you know, some of some weeks, I'll have a picture book here and a picture book here that go along with our history. So I can just write that on the bottom. Whew, this is the longest video, but I hope it's interesting and helpful. I, I promise I'm almost done. Oh my goodness, I hope I was in frame. Okay, the last little section down here I have titled Home. I have some ideas on how I'm going to use this, but essentially um, what I'm planning on is I'm going to have my kids have their chores. So my kids all have different beginning initials. So I'll put their initials or um, they also have colors if I ever want to color code. So I'll just put a little sticker or highlight dot right there so I know which kid is which. Also, I often go oldest to youngest. Anyways, I'll write down their chores for the week. So this Actually, this is still in my brain, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So if they have different chores on those days, I can write different chores in each box. If they have the same chore, like maybe my oldest is gonna unload all week long, I'll be able to write it all the way across here and use a line and know that his chore is the same. Um, I can also put my kids' privileges in here if they've earned something or if they've lost something such as tablet time, which is earned in our house with, you know, you do your schoolwork, your chores and have a positive, helpful attitude, things like that. Um, if I need to make behavior notes, so, um, and et, et cetera. So usually what I imagine is I'll have like one line per kid. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are just eight lines and I have four, four kids who are big enough to have responsibilities. My two and a half year old, yeah, she can help with stuff, but I don't write chore charts for her. I don't keep notes on her behavior. You know what I mean? Like she's not there yet. When she's three or four, she'll get a line. So what? why I was counting that though, is it would allow me to have two lines per kid for notes, for chores and so on. So I can keep track of those down there. And that is how I am using and planning for this upcoming school year. I hope this was informative, helpful, interesting. I can't wait to follow up this video with the schedule or routine I'm going into the school year with. Obviously those things tend to change once you get a feel for how life is. And then um, I feel like your routine is a good thing to mix up when you're feeling bored or tired or partway through the year, it just adds a freshness and it can be a lot of fun. So stay tuned, please subscribe so you know when that video comes out. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or not. Um, and if you have any ideas for things that I can put here, um, but yeah, just remember that I do have a separate personal planner. So, you know, normal appointments and things like that I have elsewhere. So if you have any homeschool, ideas for this, let me know. That would be awesome. All right, guys, I will talk to you next time. Bye.